Uh, I'm an assistant prof associate professor now in chemical engineering at Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, this is my first time at SciPy. I'm really impressed with the way things, uh, things are going and, and uh, interaction. So I, I want to talk about uh, some work I've been doing in this. And I want to motivate it by a couple of problems I've been trying to solve for, for quite a while. So one is uh, I have, say, computational research workflow where I set up a lot of calculations, a lot maybe hundreds or thousands. And that's typically done in a loop, maybe in a script called perovskite.py. Then I'll, I'll write a script that runs those calculations. And inevitably, one of those hundreds will have some problem. And I write a second script to fix that problem. And so I get some uh, sodium tungstate uh, three uh, script and maybe some more. And then I have analysis scripts to do various things, make various plots. You can see them all kind of highlighted there. And then uh, what I might want to do later um, is try to teach one of my students how to do this, but then I open this directory and it's you know all of these files that I have to try to figure out, um, or I try to repeat this myself. So so that's been one kind of problem is how do I document all of these things that I've done, uh, and even that my students have done trying to figure out. Another problem uh, is uh, as I'm writing, I might want to integrate uh, some math. So here I have uh, an integral uh, that I'm defining and then implementing in code, and then I have some output down here. And I want to document this uh, for some technical document, for a manuscript, for a blog post, something like that. And what I don't want to do is have to cut and paste code from a script into this document and then run it, cut and paste some, uh, some output. To me, that, that's just tedious, uh, which means it's likely to be uh, error prone. So I'll change code and forget to change the output or something like that. Um, and because it's tedious, I'm also not likely to do it. So it, this content would never even get generated um, in the first place. So this is something I want to be able to do all the time. Uh, so I've been trying to, to figure out an easy way, a non-tedious way to do that. And the third problem is, uh, I'll, I'll call it, how did I make this figure? So this is a figure from a paper we wrote uh, a couple years ago. I, I really like it, but I might ask, you know, where did I, where's the script that wrote that paper? Um, where's the, or wrote that uh, figure? Where's the data from? How did I, how did I make that data? There's, there's obviously a lot of data in it. And how would I include that data in another figure or another paper? Right? So this is already a few years old uh, and hard to find. And so that's a problem that uh, probably many people have that I've been trying to solve. And so when I think about these things, these problems all have related solutions. Right? Number one, documenting computational workflow. I could solve that if there was a way I could have a document that had all of the commands, all of the scripts that I ran in there organized in a way I knew how to read. I could run that from that document and capture the output. That would really solve my first problem. The second problem would really be solved if I could integrate and intersperse text and data and code all in the same document where I could run the code and capture the output right in the document. And the third problem, of course, would be solved if in the manuscript itself there was actually the script and data that ran uh, to make that figure. And so that's what I'm going to tell you. I, I have uh, today a solution for all three of these problems. The solution involves an editor. The editor has to know code, data, and text. It has to be able to interact with the system. So any editor with those properties could be used the way I'm going to show you. You need a markup language because you have to be able to differentiate code from text from, uh, from data. And so I'll talk about uh, a particular markup language that we use. And of course, you need convenient programming, which for the most part is going to be Python but it, it isn't specific to Python. And so I'm going to talk about Emacs plus org mode plus Python as the solution uh, to these problems and show you how these things go together. So let me just give you a, a nutshell, Emacs in a nutshell. I'm probably doing it a great disservice. It's a very old editor. Um, it's, a, it's completely extensible, extensible in a full programming language called Emacs Lisp. You can customize almost every aspect of, of the editor. So you can add features. You can, um, you can do anything you want. It operates in, in modes that provide features. So if you're in, in uh, Python mode, then it knows how to indent Python code. It knows how to run Python code. It knows how to do many things with Python. If you're in restructured text mode, it knows the restructured text syntax, and it helps you write it. If you're in LaTeX mode, it knows LaTeX syntax, and it does all of these things for you. Um, but more importantly than those things, many editors do that. What Emacs also provides is really complete integration with the operating system. So it can access. Uh, code, it can execute code, it can make code, it can compile code, it can capture the standard out and the standard error of running a process, and it can insert that back into your buffer. And so that's an important feature 
that an editor needs to have to do uh, what I'm going to show you uh, how we do. Now, how many people know org mode? A good fraction, that's good. Uh, so org mode is uh, a, a major mode in Emacs. It's really kind of two things. On one hand, it is a syntax. It's a markup language like markdown or restructured text. So there's a syntax that tells you uh, how, how to make different kinds of elements, how to make headlines, subheadlines, uh, how to d differentiate code from data, et cetera. It's uh, primarily, well, I shouldn't say primarily. It's an outline mode. I'll, I'll show you all of these things that it does. It does task management. And what's interesting about it is you can embed arbitrary LaTeX, arbitrary HTML, you can embed code in it, and then you can execute, execute the code right in the buffer. And so you can do other things like make navigatable links, and then you can take your org mode file and export it into some format that you like. If you like LaTeX, you export it as LaTeX. If you like PDF, you export to LaTeX and make a PDF. HTML, you can export it as Markdown, whatever. So, um, for example, this presentation I'll show you was written in org mode and you can embed files uh, in this PDF and this is what the org mode looks like for this particular presentation so we are right here if we expand this these are all of the bullets that are on that screen and to build this I just run a command down here I just click on this link here and it runs that command and it exports the beamer PDF and generates the slides uh, that I'm looking at. Okay. So some examples of things you can do. These are uh, simple examples. On the top I have a single shell script that lists the contents of a directory, pipes it to sort. I've captured the output below so you can see what directories um, and files are in there. This is a shell script. This is a uh, Python, uh, Python code, so the same thing, import OS, list the directory, sort the files, print them. Uh, this is syntax highlighted. You can also do Emacs Lisp if you like to do that. So you can embed all kinds of languages into um, this file and get what you want uh, captured in here. So none of this is cut and paste. I literally typed the code in uh, and then ran it. All right, so I'm going to talk about a couple of projects uh, beyond these toy examples that, that illustrate what we can do with this. So one of them is called PyCSE, so I, I'm a chemical engineering professor. I have to teach my students how to do computational and scientific uh, and engineering calculations, and I'm trying to do that in Python. And so I'm going to talk about the PyCSE project um, that I wrote completely in org mode. Uh, each, all of the sections in that go into this Python blog, so each blog post is written in org mode and, and pushed out to uh, my GitHub blog. Uh, a, a project uh, called DFT Book where I have uh, I teach a class in quantum chemistry and molecular modeling using uh, Python to drive those calculations. And we're also now uh, actually writing scientific manuscripts and exporting the manuscripts uh, in org mode. Okay, so, so the first thing, uh, I'll show you some screenshots. So this is what uh, an org mode document might look like uh, in my Emacs buffer. This is the collapsed view. If you look down here, you can see there's something like close to 30,000 lines in this little collapsed view. So each of these headings is like a chapter. You can expand it out, and you get to uh, a subsection here where you can see the, the title. This is information about the blog post um, that's been made. You can have inline rendered text in your, uh, in your buffer. Here's some code and the matplotlib figure that's all in line that shows in the buffer. So all of this is written and executed in the buffer. Every line of code here has been run. The output has been captured, so I know they're always consistent. Uh, in there. So I can export this into a PDF or into a HTML. Those are all hosted on the, on the GitHub site. I've played around with some things like Mobi and EPUB. Uh, those, those are not quite as simple to do. All right, another example uh, in trying to understand how you want to integrate. Yeah. 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 No, well, so no, the answer is no. Um, there, there is a whole export engine that knows how to handle all of the org mode elements. So each one of these stars here is a section, and each one of, like here you see three stars, that's a sub subsection. Uh, so it's automatically uh, exported in a fairly simple way uh, that, that's pretty transparent. I'll, I'll show you uh, what it looks like um, before we, we finish. 
Okay, so here's an example where I try to explain to my students how to perform a particular kind of calculation where you want to calculate, say, the adsorption energy. This is a schematic of a, of a surface, a molecule. It adsorbs on the surface. Uh, down here is Python code that shows you take the energy of this minus the energy of this minus the energy of this. Here's the captured output. So when students try this, they should get exactly the same numbers if they've done it the same way that I did uh, in there. So this is some, uh, again, 300-ish pages uh, of code. Uh, all of it is, there's no cut and paste code in here, uh, at least, and no cut and paste results. So another interesting thing we can do is we can have code that generates data. So up here is the tail end of a function that printed out this table. This table has a name, composition-volume, and I can use this table as a data source in another code block. So if I want to have series of, of things going on, then down here I use data equals composition volume, and I can extract out the columns of this table and make a plot over here. So I'm gonna take a, a brief minute here and, and do some demos. So again, you can have clickable, clickable links. Um, here's an example of, of some Python code, just to, to holler out to uh, nthought. You can see I'm using the nthought canopy Python distribution uh, directly from Emacs. And you just type, a, you put your cursor in here. Emacs knows that it's in a code block now, and I just type Control-C, Control-C, uh, and that's that. So I can also look here. This is the uh, Python computations in science and engineering. This is the sm uh, short collapsed version that has 26,900 lines. If I go back to my uh, buffer. Here you can click on this if you want to see the actual LaTeX. You can render it right in the buffer to see if it's, if it's correct. Down here is the code that we used, and then this is the figure um, that is there. And this gets rendered into PDF like so. So here is the PDF. You can look over here and see the code. There's line numbers in here. So you can refer to these, the code gets, the math gets rendered nicely, and down here is, is the actual figure. Uh, so I mentioned that you can um, export this to um, HTML, so here, here is Emacs Lisp, there's about 275 lines that parse the uh, org file and generate HTML that is compatible with the blogophile um, blog system. So what that does is, is just look through here, it gets the title from, uh, from headings, it generates the YAML heading, uh, and then it generates the HTML, and then it copies the HTML to the right directory. And so all of those posts get put here uh, on, on this GitHub site, and so you can click on categories. For example, I like this first heat transfer example. So all of this was done in uh, org mode and then exported to GitHub. And so you can see the math, the, the Python code, different versions of solutions, and even animated GIFs that uh, show how the solution works. All right, so I wanna show one, uh, maybe two final examples of, of things that are interesting to me about this. Uh, this is a link, uh, a, a manuscript that we have recently written and submitted. So there are interesting things like these links that are site colon something. If I click on this, it opens the BibTeX file directly in the place that I want. So this is why I call Emacs a browser for text, um, because I can do things like that. Um, the supporting information file is where this really shines. Uh, here we can illustrate how to attach files, so we have an Excel sheet that's directly embedded in here. And we can use that uh, data in line. So here, for example, is a table. We can use that as a data source for a, a Python uh, script. Somebody mentioned earlier at the uh, image uh, competition that you tend to spend a lot of time customizing your, uh, your figures. So that's what happens here. And all of this, I'll just skip to how it gets rendered in the PDF. You can see that right here might be uh, an Excel file that you might wanna double click 
and have that. So this will be a supporting information file that's generated from my org file. All right, so the last thing I want to show is uh, this DFT book. So this is the uh, thing that I showed you before. One of the reasons why you might want to have uh, a deeply integrated editor is you can do things like create a little menu here. And so I'll just click on uh, Get to Do Agenda, which is some code I wrote that finds a bunch of all the elements of things to do. So here are, I can click on this one and it'll take me to the place where I have tagged something that I'm supposed to do. There's something wrong with this script is a note that I left myself. And so I can do uh, sort of task management uh, at a fairly uh, low level here. All right, and that uh, can be rendered out to um, something as well. So I think uh, I had a minute to go about uh, 45 seconds ago. So I'll just wrap it up there. Um, let me go back to my uh, presentation and talk about some brief challenges in, in this approach. So one challenge is you have to use Emacs. There's just no way around it. Org mode is a markup language and a functionality that's written in Emacs Lisp for Emacs. Other editors could mimic some of the capabilities. Uh, restructured text in Sphinx is pretty close. It is extendable, but it lacks some of the uh, editor features, editor integration. And getting this exported format perfect, you know, journals want perfect LaTeX in their format, uh, so that can be challenging. But I find that I actually don't care about the LaTeX anymore. I just want to read it in org mode so that I have the easy navigation, I have the interactivity. Um, but my students like to read HTML and PDF. So let me just conclude here. Uh, I think reproducible research in general is going to need new tools, uh, new workflows. I tried to show you some of the way I've solved those problems. They're going to be, for me, tools I can customize. Uh, this was really a game changer. Two years ago, I started doing this, and it really enabled all of these things, the last one being one of the most important, uh, managing my, my sort of daily responsibilities. And the key features that enable this are extensible editor, extensible markup language, and scripting. Uh, and this, these slides are available uh, at this GitHub repo. So thanks, and I'd be happy to take questions. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, what does the org file itself look like? Is it, is it line oriented? And specifically, how does it interact with source code? So it is plain text. All right, this is just plain text uh, that's in there. You can um, look at it that way. Uh, you can it's easy to integrate with Git. Um, because it's mostly prose, uh, you have to think a little bit about whether you want every sentence on a single line, for example, so you get better, good diffs. If you write normally, then you, you have one uh, long line that, that wraps in an editor and your diffs don't make sense. But if you're not a diff user, then, uh, then it's just fine. Yeah, so, so the question is, uh, can you debug uh, the code? So this whole thing is in org mode, so um, you can, with a, a command, get into a temporary buffer that's Python mode, and then you can use whatever functionality that Python mode has uh, to do debugging or, or whatever. Uh, so if, for those of you not familiar with Emacs, down here it says Python, so this little buffer down here is now in Python mode. And, uh, you, you probably could. Uh, I, I've, I'm not an IPython user. Uh, I tend to, you know, for, for writing applications, for writing books like this, I tend to have such small snippets as examples that it's, it's not necessary. But there is an IPython integration uh, that I, I don't use. Uh, so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I have the opposite problem. I'm the advisor. I just force my students to use work mode. <laughs> um, 
So I think the answer is it depends on what both parties are doing. Any editor can write org mode, right? It's just plain text with some fairly simple markup. So if you were willing to kind of take the burden of, of uh, you know, fixing it up. Uh, that's correct. So far, that's correct. Um, yeah, it's, it's like using Word. If you want to collaborate in writing a, something in Word, everybody just about has to use Word. So I see I think here. Mm. Yeah, so typically I, I have, this is sort of my uh, dashboard in org mode, um, and so these are current projects that are all links. I can just click on them. Um, there, there's something in org mode where you, you can have a directory full of org files, and that's your agenda directory, so it will scan through all of those for, for things to do. Um, but that's a, uh, those are sort of the two ways to do it, is you just maintain a dashboard. Or uh, so I have this little quick command down at the bottom. It gives me a list of like the six most common things that I need to go to from anywhere. Um. All right. Thanks.